Jehova Malak, Ola Malamat. Jehova Malak, Yame Irakis. Jehova Gadola, Makari and Tios. Jehova Erdanai, Jehova Elohim. Kurios Tios Panta Greta, Kurios Tios Pistos. Elder at Jehova, El Emona Jehova. Ibas Leon, Kurios, Otios, O Pantacreta. Baslios, Baslion, Kai Kurios, Kurio. Ehova the Bar Halal, Elohim the Bar Halal. Ehova Elohim, Gadol Gadol Gebura. El Elohim Israel, Isus Christos. Ton Christon is in Ton Kurion. Kurion ni mahagion panta kreta, gadol gadol, gebura. Ehova ishmal kam, ehova shamma. El nakum yehova, el nakum yapa. Natsak Israel la sheker, gava gava. Triembos yehova, Isus Christos, panta kreta, gadol gadol, gebura. Moraros nasa. Elohim, Elohim, Ille la Yeshalut, Yehova Malak, Yehova Malak, Olam, Olam Ad, Yehova Elohenu, Yehova Ekad, Gadol, Gadol, Gebura. Zaan Logan, Ogar, Tautios, Dulas, Desmios, Despotes, Dikae Sune, Enisus Christos, Kurion, 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 Hagion, 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 Numa Pantacreta, Gadol Gadol, Gebura, Derek, Emunabakar, Meshvat, Shawa. The Megalogai of Yahweh El Elyon Elohim is always alive and powerful, sharper than any two edged sword. Piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow. And it is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart. All scripture is God breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, or training in righteousness. That the man of Lord God might be mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Study to show thyself a prudent to Lord God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth, or very accurately handling this very great, unique, infallible, and inherent great word of truth. Glory be to my Yahweh Sitkano, to the highest, and peace be unto the mankind on this earth. To those who believe in the Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ, by faith alone in Christ alone. Great goodness and goodwill towards them who love to walk breath by breath in the cherishing and in this nurturing of this great and unique indwelling mentoring ministry of Lord God the Holy Ghost. One more day being renewed in our lives to the praise of Lord God's glory. To realize each and every breath of our life, it has to be purely in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. Not only to, to learn the doctrine, but to make our life practically to the Word of God, to make known to these people the impact of His eternal Word, which can change the minds of the people who are called to be spiritually dead. By that we meant to say the unbelievers who don't believe in my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The great impact what any human being can have on the face of the earth is the impact of the Word of God. The unchanging Word, the eternal Word changes the changing man into eternity. So the Word of Lord God to be learned, to be made known or to be make the things possible to make our lives impact on this earth, it demands that we be in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. Therefore, any time we could start up the Bible study or the Word of God to be heard, the very first thing, make sure you're in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. Have 
Use the privacy of your priest to confess your sins through rebound. 1 John 1 9. Get back into the mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, and learn His Word. So, dear brethren, in Ecclesiastes chapter 10, in verse 10, he said, If the iron be blunt, and he do not wet the edge, then must he put to more strength, but wisdom is profitable to direct. The example of this is very, very simple. If the axe is blunt, which I've been taking to chop a tree in the forest, it cannot go to chop the tree because the axe is blunt. It takes a lot of strength. The same way over here, if you are not using the privacy of your priesthood to confess your sins to rebound and get back into the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, and learn the word of Lord God, no matter however how much people may try to get into the standards of the Lord's mind, they cannot. Though you apply more strength, you cannot. Because the mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, work for us in the church age is very, very simple. And it always loves to lead you into all truth. That's the very simple procedure of the Word of God. The reason why we have the mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, is to make us into learn the whole counsel of God, the entire counsel of God. So, it is not just to be in the time of your reading the Word of God or learning the Word of God to be in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, but it is a must that every believer on the face of the earth should be controlled by Lord God, the Holy Spirit. If not, it will be like a blunt axe. You cannot love to learn the Word of God. You cannot live your life on the earth according to the will of God. When you do not know how to walk, where to walk, when to walk, then for sure you will never know how to make up your life as an useful impact for many unbelieving souls or perishing souls who haven't known my Christ. So, use the privacy of your priesthood to confess your sins through rebound. And let's come back and learn what Lord God the Father has prepared and kept for us on today's day in eternity to past to the praise of His glory. In learning and understanding His marvelous, matchless, glorious will in this church age. We shall continue after this prayer. Infinitely, Divine Holy Father, once again we come unto the matchless grace of the Lord. We don't deserve anything on the face of the earth which you could call to ourselves that it's purely our effort. It's purely the grace to understand the word. It's purely the grace to have the bona fide gift of the pastor teacher. It's purely the grace to have this completed can of scripture in our hands to know the truth. It's purely your grace, O oh Lord, that we are able to live on this earth. And it's purely your grace, O oh Father, to understand the greatest will of your life on this earth, to be desired in the lives of many, so that they could come back and understand for which you are predestined us in this church age. So, Father, being thankful for this marvelous, matchless grace of yours, one more day you have given graciously, though we don't deserve for it, and as we go and see the things which are prepared and kept for us on today's date in eternity past to the praise of your glory, we pray the mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Ghost, to enlighten, to challenge, and to bless us by this message. In Christ's name we ask, Sovereign Lord. Amen. So what is man on the face of the earth as a Christian? Looking upon the present circumstances of the church age, it is exact the copy of Matthew chapter 27, the way how the soldiers mocked, ridiculed, spit, and then they beat him. This passage over here, what we could look in Matthew chapter 27, signifies the way how we are adoring our Lord, saying that we really worship him. But in reality, our life, if we could look to the Word of God, what we ought to be, we are not able to stand nor understand what exactly the way of the Word of God demands through us. And we are simply acting as if we are really able to pay reverence to God. 
Because when Lord God made man in his image, then with what we were able to read, getting every thought into captivity for Christ in your blood. From there he has fallen to the state called to be Salem. And that Salem, what Apostle Paul emphasizes in E. I. Con of Colossians 3.10 to make sure no matter how much of your pressure may be in your life, you have been designed now to be a disciple to the Lord. And that's what we look over there in John 1.11. To them he gave the power to become the sons of God. And the point over there when we read he gave the power to become the sons of God, it is the word called technon. And the meaning of the word technon over here, it is emphasizing the point that we are called to be as born-again disciples in the Lord if not, we are not at all disciples to Christ. The very first phase of your life being born physically, the second life, what you're going to be born again, it is called to be oriented as disciples to Christ. If you are not a disciple to my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, then you are not at all born again. So here, Salem, what we're going to read, it emphasizes that against any pressure in your life, no matter whatever may be the pressure in your life, you have been designed now to become the disciple of the word of the Lord. And that's what your blood should pump in. Looking into the ministry of my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, he began his ministry with the disciples. He handed over his ministry to the disciples. His entire realm of walk was in the realm of disciples. The same thing he gives us a great commission in Matthew 28 and 20 to say, Go and make disciples of all the nations and teach them what I have commanded you to teach. And that's the discipleship work which is lacking in our pulpits today. No daily carrying their cross and coming to learn the word of God. The greatest burden to be a pastor teacher is to daily teach the word of Lord God no matter what, whether there may be people to listen or they don't listen day by day, make it up a challenge to teach the word of Lord God because we have a lot many things from Iota to Carida to be taught from Genesis 1, 1 to Revelation 20 to 21. If each and every minister so-called reformed or not or not reformed or whatsoever it is, if they would simply humbly obey this great principle being told in Colossians chapter 1 because we need to scripturize if the things people may not understand because they think what is a minister. When Apostle Paul says, wherefore in verse 25, I have been made a minister according to the dispensation of God, which is called oikonomas, which is given to me for your word to fulfill what it is the Greek word plerao. The meaning of the word plerao is nothing but dear brethren, to make it up to be full, completely full. That is once again making up your blood to be disciple oriented. The Greek word plerao is equivalent to the Hebrew word male, and the strong word number 4390, if you could look upon it, emphasizes, make sure your blood has been associated or oriented to be like a disciple to Christ against any odds of your life. Make sure your life has been associated or your blood has been associated to be a disciple to my Christ. That is, fill it up with all the things wherewith it can make it to be called, to be full. So here when he uses the word plerao, which is called to fulfill the word of God. You know, that's the real minister work. And today we have forgot the discipleship program. We have forgot the word salem. We have forgot the word demoth. God created man in his own image, demoth. And the point over here, what we can learn further, which emphasizes in his own likeness of Genesis 1.26, it is called Demoth. Make it up your point to say in Genesis 1.26 emphasizes, God said, let us make man in our image, after our likeness. The word Salem, what does it mean to say? Man will be in the process of surviving on this earth only when he is capable of making against any pressure or against any odd infinite circumstances that could stand up against him, he has to be a disciple oriented. That's the word plera o which every believer has to do. Every pastor teacher has to know. If he's not oriented, associated to be a plera o, he will never realize the importance of growing up in grace and in the knowledge of Bible doctrine. 
If not, what is the point of having a word of God after salvation on this earth? God the Father would have transformed you from salvation at the moment when you believe in the Lord and have kept you secure. But here it is not the point of making you to be after salvation to remove out from this earth, but to put you in extreme pressure. Simple example, Job, the life of Job, what he was. He goes through now to realize he abhorred himself. But God the Father intended him to grid up his lions. But here you look in Job chapter 42, he says in verse number 6, For the pressures of his life, he said, Wherefore I abhor myself and repent in dust and ashes. Therefore he said, He is not able to open up his mouth and talk. The word abhor is what? He is thinking. It is called Ma'ash in the Hebrew, the strong code number 3988. It meant to say, pressure in your blood. Absolute pressure, like a thorn. The way how he was suffering, he think it, it is like a thorn in the blood. But Lord God intends him to become the standards to grid up his lions and to stand before the will of Lord God the Father. Because in Psalms chapter 71, if you can look upon this verse, in verse number 6, he said, in uh, 75 it has to be, he said, you have gridded me up. And the way Harvey is going to grid us up, it's very, very simple. He is going to grid us up in the process of making you all to renovate the standards of your thinking. That's how he is going to grid us up. Apart from that, there is no way how he is going to grid you up against any odd. He wants to mentally train you up. That's the real simple knowledge, what we can find and gain from Romans chapter 12, verses 1, 2, and 3. Do not be conformed to the world, but rather renovate the standards of your thinking. Grid up. The same thing what he claims over here in Job, chapter 40, in verse number 6. He said, Then answered the Lord unto Job out of the whirlwind, and said, Grid up thy lions. The Hebrew word azar, the meaning of the word azar is nothing but against any pressure you are going to have in your life, renovate your head, renovate your thinking. You may have a lot ample of reasons not to come to Christ, but he said, I have been putting you into test like the way how Job has been tested, because if you don't pass through the stage of testing in the presence of Lord God the Father, you cannot renovate your life. That's what he meant over here to say, let us make man in our image that is called to be Salem. He has to pass through the test. A simple example for us to learn about this point in the standards of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ because in his humanity what he was because he was born in the spirit we are born again in the spirit that's the difference since he's been born in the spirit the life of us also resembles the same procedure of my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ provided we are born again in Christ and walking in the fellowship of Lord God the Holy Spirit breath by breath we need to have only one thing the revealed God the God man in us so he shows us the pattern the pattern how each and every believer ought to walk on this earth so what is that pattern we are going to to get on this earth he emphasizes in simple terms the first one that first of all his birth was been endangered by many people because satan knows if he has been born he will be the witness so he was been taken many odds of life so we look upon how the first name could come through the mary the way how joseph is not had been known and joseph wants to privately leave her but the angel of lord god strengthens him saying that this is of god so from there on we come to see by the age of two years the way how Herod goes to slaughter the children even there also the attack of Satan and afterwards we look the way how Lord and Savior Jesus Christ has been grown up from the temple till to his age of 30 even here also if you would look 20 years and the way how people are thinking to research he might have come to India he might have gone to China or XYZ we seldom care about that which have not been found in the Bible but Isaiah chapter 50 verses 4 through 7 emphasizes the point 
that day by day he was not rebellion to the word of God, but day by day he was taking up his cross and he was able to become the pattern for us, as he said in Luke 9.33, because in Isaiah chapter 50 verses 4 through 7, he emphasizes the point over there, saying every day he was taking up his cross and following my Christ. Every day taking up his cross and following the will of God the Father. Because if you could look over here in Isaiah chapter 50, you can understand verses 4 through 7. The principle of life, what every believer ought to be in Christ. He said, The Lord God hath given me the tongue of the learned. Again, the word learned over here is called to be Lama. That meant to say Mantano plus Vidasco. That is, daily to be a disciple to the word of God. That I should know how to speak a word in season to him that is weary. He wakeneth morning by morning. The one who is weary, it meant to say what? The people who are not having sufficient evidence to fix their eyes upon Christ or to call upon the name of the Lord God to be saved. So he wakeneth morning by morning. He wakeneth my ear to hear as the learned again the word limut. The meaning of the word limut is nothing but as a discipleship program in your blood to get every thought into captivity for Christ. The Lord God hath opened my ear as I was not rebellion. You know, you will have pressure upon your blood to renovate your thinking so that you shall not be called as a rebellion to the Lord. So he said, I was not rebellion neither turned away back. That is what today for pressure, people are not coming to know the word of God. So they have their own defense mechanisms, their own comfort zones, not to learn the word of God, not to become the will of the Lord God. So he said, I was not turning back. The word turned away is called over here as Sug, the strong code number 5472. And what is the meaning of Sug? So that you have been put so much of pressure in your life that you have been actually not capable of erecting a structure that could please the law. So that's the word Sug. So here you find, he said, turned, I did not turn away. That is, Sug against any pressure any pressure which could come to my life. I haven't stopped, but rather I renovated my thinking. Any pressure that could come to my life, I haven't stopped, I was renovating my life. That's the word sug. The same thing, salem. Pressure upon your blood so that you ought to be a disciple against any odd circumstances. It is not that now you can look upon the way how uh, people are forgotten to walk in the paths of the Lord God, but they think it is a pressure or a burdensome thing for them to come to Christ, to carry their cross and to know the word of Lord God, where the bona fide gift of the pastor teacher can come to train them up every day. They think it's a pressure to sit and listen. And coming to learn that word of God, they think it's a pressure because they are walking in the process of all odds in this life to learn the word of God. So they think it's a pressure. None of the simple way to say. They think it's a pressure to come and sit and learn. So that we have all our infinite circumstances. For example, the smartphone, the, the things pertaining to the lustful patterns of the old sin nature. All this thing, they think they put as a pressure because they are not able to acquire to gather in the word of Lord God. But over here, when he said, I did not turn away the word sug, it meant to say, Lord, in spite of all of those things which we are able to come to the church, he said, though we don't have all of those things, yet Yet it is a great pleasure for us to have those pressures in us to prove to the world that in spite of all those pressures, at we love thy word and we prove that to this angelic conflict. You know, today to come to Bible class, you may have all your reasons, all your wall of fortifications, all your standards of having your defense mechanisms. For example, you can just look and ask an average Christian, does he know that he has to come every day to the church? He would say no, because he cannot come, though he has to say weekly once I will make up my class, the remaining things I cannot come, because he has all his reasons. 
the reasons of his bread and butter, the reasons of his survival, the reasons of his luxurious way of life. As we look upon the word for, for Luke chapter 16, the rich man which has been used for him. For the Lazarus it was Potokas, but for the rich man it was Agathesune. That is, he had a very good comfortable life. No matter whether the cares or the anxieties or the riches of the world, he would say, I cannot come every day. But here the word sug meant to say, you will be tested by so many things. Because whenever you are able to come to learn the word of Lord God, Satan with its entire angelic host will try to divert your mind. That's what we calculated. Against of your each and every thought. There will be so many thoughts inspired by Satan which would say, Let's go against the word of God and enjoy this life. Let's spend not our time in reading the word of God. Let's spend not our time in kneeling before the presence of the Lord. What does it try to give you? It tries to give you, let's relax, let's sleep, let go the time. And as if we have a great journey, people love to spend the time in vanity, saying that we need to relax. We had a lot of journey today. You know, the point over here for Sug, it meant to say what? You have been in return given such sort of a pressure in your life. In spite of all that, you're going to erect a structure. By that we meant to say what? Like Potokas believer of uh, this uh, Lazarus in Luke chapter 16. What he was? In spite of all of all those circumstances, he dearly beloved, he was dearly walking in the will of the Lord or doing the will of the Lord. Though it was a menial meal that he wanted to get every day, yet he never let go the work of Christ. He was walking to do the will of Christ. He was all the time in the presence of Christ. That's what we look over here, the menial meal, Potokas. Though he was like a beggar running up and down for his foot. That's the meaning, Sog. But here people are like people are like the rich man in the parable of Lazarus. They're trying out all methods of Agathesune. But here Lord God intends not to turn away. The word Sug, what you can find against any pressures of this life, you have been intended to walk in the fellowship of Lord God the Holy Spirit. You have been intended to do the will of Lord God the Holy Spirit against any pressures of this life. So he said, I did not turn back. And then the word back over here meant to say, dear brethren, people who are able to build up a wall of fortification and try to give many, many reasons for their own self-defense mechanisms or X, Y, Z. Therefore, Bible doctrine is spiritual phenomena, dear brethren. It is not an intellectual mind. You can learn to look. The point over here, when we look upon Accord, what we call strong code number 268, it meant to say the way how man builds up his wall of fortification and limits his reasonings. He stops to renovate his head. He stops to spend his time in the word of Lord God. So here he says that he was not rebellion. Neither he turned back. Rebellion for having in your blood the standards of your renovated head. So pressure, pressure upon your blood. Rebellion meant to say your blood would say, don't go to renovate your head. Your blood would talk. We are not in the creation to love the world, to, to love the creator, but to love the world. Therefore, while we are still ang, why can't we spend our time in search of our lustful patterns of the old sin nature? That's what it happens here, brother. When we call the word, when you have been in the process of rebellion nature. A rebellion is what your blood rebels. It doesn't come to obey in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. So now we look over here, dear brother, and he said, I gave my back to the smiters. The word back meant to say, which is your strength. The middle part of your body used up for lifting. So here, if your back is gone, you know very well you can't do anything. So your back has been lifted up. So, I gave my back to the smiters. Who are the smiters? The word, who are not able to be, the Hebrew word called to be Naka, the strong word number, 5221. The smiters are the people who always make you all not to grow up into grammatias. They have their own reasons to see that you're not going to become a grammatias to the Lord. These are the smiters. They see 
that your vigor and valor is not being spent now to become a grammatical level of thinking. People read the Bible and they think that's enough. No, you have to be a grammatical level of thinking. You need to write the word of Lord God as we find in Deuteronomy 17, 18, emphasizing the king, the one who will be sitting upon the throne. He shall write at least once the copy of the law. If ever there is a mistake, again, he is going to read it again. Till he could finish writing the law, the first five books of the Pentateuch, he cannot be a king. Coming to the New Testament, we are called to be kings and priests. So what is our work now? As kings, it is not just to be in the process of reading the Bible, but in the process of writing the Bible, smiters, naka. We are called to be the men who have grown up in a vigor and valor, to the standards of writing the Bible. That's what like a scribe. And people don't love to become a scribe. They're not even happy to read the Bible. But the word of Lord God emphasizes become a scribe. How we would become a scribe? By writing the word of the Lord. And today people are not at all happy to write the word of God, far less you think it's enough for us to become the word of God because they have many, many reasons. You know, having to get, enter into such sort of theological colleges and definitions by those men which are not being related to the fear of Lord God because they don't practice it. The word of Lord God says, day by day preach the word of Lord God, morning and evening, let the fire upon the altar shall never go out, let it be always burning. They don't know what for the train. Every day the word of Lord God has to be taught. They're not even worried for that to look. And they have all their reasons to talk about, all their reasons to think about. So here the word, dear brother, and what you can look, it emphasizes the point. Naka is when the people have not taken the step or the good step to become the word of Lord God, to become the will of Lord God by growing up into become like a grammatias. They would say Second Corinthians 3 and they would emphasize we are now the living epistles. If Lord God intended in Deuteronomy 17, 18 to write the copy of a law to ascend into the throne so that they could become the will of Lord God the Father, then how much more will he not, will he not think upon the standards of making you all to write the word of God as a scribe in the church age? Therefore, Matthew 13, 52, as many people don't understand this passage because it has not been properly translated. Joining as disciples, growing up into grammatias, that's the very simple logic there. If you have joined as a disciple, you have to grow up into grammatias. That's where smiters will come to hit upon your back. The real strength of a man is the back. Greater the strength in your alliance of your back, greater you can be firm enough to stand. So the real strength for any believer is to grow up into grammatias. If you don't grow up into grammatias, you cannot become that strength. So the smiters will come back and smite you. Therefore, Christ, the Lord of God, said, I gave my back to the smiters. If they would no matter however try, first of all, I was not rebellion to the word of God, neither I turned away against any pressure, against any odd infinite circumstances that could come up from my comfort zones or the reasons of the life to say, because we will be disciples in such a manner because of such and such things, you know. Today, to come back to Christ, to learn the word of Lord God, they would give all reasons. But there, giving your back, or the things pertaining to not turning back, it meant to say what? No reasons, but in return, you are giving up with all pressure. It is just uh, all pleasure to be in the process of overcoming any pressure in this life. It's a great joy, count it all joy, as James said. It's a great joy for us to have our pressure because we have to grow up into grammatias, joined as disciples to the Lord. It's a great pressure for us. So, when we are having such sort of a great pleasure, we cannot end up our life in the standards of stupid men who are thinking to take up the cross and to become a grammatias or to join to disciples to grow up into grammatias is a great 
a great great pleasure or it's a great pressure for them because it's a great it, if it is not a great pleasure it becomes a great pressure for you so he said i have given my back to those who are smiters that is the people who have not making me to grow up into grammatias my cheeks that is the way how i have to be a disciple oriented to all of all fortification and they have been plucked off that is with pressure they have tried to put upon my head and there is nothing good in me therefore i hid my face from shame and spitting that is against any pressure upon your head the way if expression of your mind they have given it for shame you know what is a shame if you're not a grammatias and if you're not able to make up disciples from grammatias and if your blood is not oriented in making disciples to the lord then it turns out to be a shame and then spitting because much grace given for you and much has been expected from you because much is given to you so you look your head is not been renovated neither your life of work is not been renovated so he said i gave my back to the smiters and my cheeks to them that pulled the plucked off the hair i hid not my face from shame and spitting for the lord god will help me therefore shall i not be confounded therefore i have set my face like a flint and i know that i shall not be ashamed like a flint meant to say what against any pressure of all of fortification that this people may build up i will still be a disciple i will make up my blood to be renovated in the standards of the word of god therefore there will be no shame no drawing because my body is been renovated day by day with the word of lord god therefore i shall not be ashamed the people who are ashamed are the ones who are not fulfilling matthew 28:18 to 20 which is to go and make disciples they cannot go to go and make disciples until unless they have been grown up into grammatias in the lord so first discipleship program and then they are going to make up the blood in the process therefore he said i have set my face like a flint against any pressure of my life i still become the word of lord god so this is the life what christ our lord of god sets forth for us so the day when he was been born attacked by satan the day when he was been grown up till to the age of 2 years the slaughtering of the children from there if we could look upon the way how the standards of the life from age 11 till to the age 30 day by day he was been given to the smiters day by day his back was been given to spit so all these things if we could look and understand he never hesitated back to be a follower of follower of god the father or disciple of god the father because he sets forth for us as a pattern after this he has been taken for the process called into the testing after baptism now we look over here for 40 days of his suffering and now he has been put to test again the test for three times what we can look man does not live by bread alone and only the lord of a god he shall bow down he shall not tempt the lord of a god so all these things he said it stands written it stands written it stands written you know if you have gone through the process of this 20 years god the father would have stopped him testing but here you look the word the meaning of the word sell them and say what pressure for you pressure every time pressure every time god the father wants to prove your integrity that's what people are failing today to understand why we go through such suffering in this life because god the father wants to prove your integrity every time look into the life of my lord and savior jesus christ from day one of his birth the way how he was been been taken and attacked by satan afterwards his graduation from age 11 to age 30 till he could go back to begin his ministry 40 days of fasting even after 40 days of fasting he has been taken satan to say a convenient time to come so from there on when he began his ministry even after the way he is going to be crucified on the cross he would pray to be tested before god the father to say lord if it is thy will remove this cup so every time you look it's a test every time you look it's a pressure every time you come it's an intention of god the father to testify you or to put you into test so that you could stand faithfully to the word of god that's the meaning of the word salam but we christians today are not able to walk in that process of salam to the lord 
we are not able to realize. You know what we are? We are exactly like that Matthew chapter 27 crowd. The soldiers, the way, have them mocked, they're ridiculed. They accept the will of God saying they think he is God and they simply now go to give the reasons the way how these people, they come up with their life. So, for example, when you could look upon the standards of Matthew chapter 27, because we have many lessons to learn from these passages, he said first, Whom shall you have? They sought Barabbas over Christ. That's what the intention of man is all the time, choosing that which is against the will of God. You know, in these passages also, and if you could consider the wife of this Pontus Pilate, she said, I have suffered many things about this man. In verse number 19, you don't have nothing to do with him. Then he comes and he says to the chief priests and elders, persuaded, saying that they should ask Barabbas and destroy Jesus. The woman, whether she was a believer in Christ, we do not know. But this woman, she said, having a dream in her, saying that about this righteous man, you don't have anything to do, because I have suffered many things on behalf of him. The word righteous meant to say Dikaias, meant to say he's an upright man. So in verse 19, when he was set down on the judgment seat, his wife sent unto him, saying, Have you nothing to do with that just man, righteous man? For I have suffered. You know, the word over here meant to say what? Even the unbelieving standards of man, they will have an influence of the righteous man impact. Therefore, today the church age, every believer has been sanctified and kept apart to put upon the new clothes, the clothes of Antichas, Unekai, Hosetis, Thessalatia, the clothes of what you can wear in the righteous standards, so that depending upon you or looking upon you, they should suffer and they should say, yes, this is a righteous one. You know why? Because here the people have been so much blinded, the chief priests, the elders, they persuaded, they wanted Barabbas rather than Christ. The Pontus Pilate wanted to free him. So the Pontus Pilate wanted to set him free. He couldn't because the way how these people they persuade so here we look the chief priests elders persuaded the multitude that they should ask Barabbas and destroy Jesus the word Apalume meant to say to put to death the governor answered and said unto him whether of the two will I, re will I release unto you they said Barabbas Pilate said unto them what shall I do unto Jesus which is called Christ they all said let him be crucified the governor said, Why, what evil hath he done? But they cried out the more, seeing him to be crucified. The word kakos, what he can look, meant to say, Dear brethren, ra'a. The meaning of ra'a meant to say, What distorted thinking do you have to think that he has against you, so that you can crucify him? What distorted thinking does he have? That's what the word evil. What kakos he has? What kakos he has made up to you? That's what the evil is. But here you can find that there was no evil in him because even his wife witnesses saying that we don't have anything to do with a just man, with a righteous man. That's what a Christian ought to be in the presence of unbelievers. You have to be accounted as an upright man. The man who has a yashir relationship with Lord God the Father. Your umbilical cord being tied up with Lord God the Father every breath of your life. And the unbelievers, in fact, indeed, when this woman, whether she is known to Christ or not, but this woman says, I have suffered many things in my dream. If this thing, these things could happen to them, then how much more you're called to be a godly spiritual Christian Christians in the sense called to be as quickening spirit so on the pneuma rather than the word what we can call living beasts that's what the word should be for just making up to be as rational souls you have been called to be a quickening spirit the first Adam was a living soul the last Adam was a quickening spirit so how much more today under the name of my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ every believer ought to be a quickening spirit and on behalf of you the way have unbelievers will go through such sufferings in their dreams.
because they would understand that these are the chosen ones of Christ. But today, why you lost that sanctity? How the people of unbelievers are not able to realize the impact if they could touch the apple of my eye, as I said to the Old Testament saints. But now it is not just the apple of our eyes, but it is now called to be the wife of Christ. If anything is happening to the Christians, it is purely because they are not in accord with the standards of Bible. If they would be in the accord of the standards of Bible, even the Pontus Pilate wife, the way how she witnesses saying that there is nothing for us to do with this man because he is a just man. He is just a righteous man and on behalf of him we suffer many things. But now the chief priests, the elders and they come up with persuasion saying that this man should be crucified. You know how contrary it is? The woman with just one dream she comes to say. Nothing to do with him. The people they have tested my Christ from the time of Moses. The people they have gone through this ritual from the time of my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ because he was been there as a living example of the Word of God yet they could not recognize him as to be the Son of God but rather they wanted to crucify him though they have tasted him they deny him but though they have noted only once in the dream saying that he is a just man they will be in the standards of having to express the fear of Lord God, an expression of showing what a great fear they can show forth to the word of God and respect to the will of God. So, dear brethren, here you can find what evil, what distorted thinking he has in his head, so that you want to crucify him. The more they said, let him be crucified. When Pilate saw that, the, that he could not prevail nothing, but rather a tumult was made, he took water and washed his hands before the multitude, saying, I am innocent of the blood of this just person. The word innocent over here, dear brethren, it meant to say that he is not guilty. And the meaning of the word not guilty meant to say, dear brethren, that I have nothing to do in all of my strength. From the rising of the sun till the going down of the sun, I have nothing to do because I have been absolutely pure. Because with any of my intention, with any of my standards, I have never been in the process of involving even by thought, word or in fact indeed anything in the part of my heart or in my consciousness to say that I would love to crucify him. The Hebrew word naka meant to say what? Your vigor and valor from the rising of the sun till the going down of the sun, you have been called to be innocent. That's it. Your vigor and valor, you just look, you're called to be innocent. That's the point, naka. He said, I'm innocent. The Greek word over here for us is a to us. And the word a uh, to us, a uh, negative to us, meant to say innocent. So he said, I am not been found guilty. The Hebrew word is very clear, naka. And the meaning of the word over here, what we can find for naka, strong code number 5352, it meant to say what? From the rising of the sun till the going down of the sun, I am no way involved in this. Today we don't have that consciousness to be clear before the Lord. We cannot say we are naka to the Lord. Because we aren't giving our best in our soul and spirit. We aren't able to give our best to the will of Lord God the Father. And today people are not able to realize. They say, including the pastor teachers, if we can take... We are able to do the ministry, but indeed you are not able to do any ministry to the Lord. You cannot give this testimony like the way how Pontus Pilate can give. I am pure. I am innocent. Apostle Paul said that in Acts chapter 20 verses 27 and following because he taught them for a span of eight, three years, day and night, the entire council of Lord God. And then he said, I am innocent. I am pure from the blood of this people, I am innocent. Until and unless he could teach that up for a span of three years, he cannot. Today we cannot claim we are naka. Our consciousness can clearly tell us we are not giving our best to do the will of God the Father. We are not performing our best from the rising of the sun to the going down of the sun. Let it be any standards of a vigor and valor which we take. You can understand that we are not at all clear to the Lord God. 
We are not having that great reason to say we are clear, we are pure. We are not giving our best, our fidelity does not match. In everything, if you can look, we are not at all able to show that clearness to the Lord God. And what is that clarity? Have you been spending your time to read the word of Lord God with all diligence? Have you been able to grow up like a grammatius with all diligence? Have you able to give with all of your full strength? Therefore we see that Deuteronomy chapter 6. Love your Lord your God with all of your soul, with all of your strength, with all of your mind. With all of your soul, with all of your strength, with all of your mind, with all of your heart. That's the meaning Nakka meant to say. Any vigor and valor of your life, any vigor and valor, what best man can have in his potential? Any vigor and valor, what do you think this is more capable for him uh, in his athletic realm, in his realm of any achievements of this life? What do you think? This is great, this I can do. I can do something impossible, what the people cannot do. So all those things, anything which you can think, this is his maximum potential. For example, the way how tree can grow up to its maximum potential. Anything what they have, the nature which can use its maximum potential for a bird, if you can look, having two thin legs, the way how it carries its weight upon that, two thin legs by flying in the feathers. It tries to balance it for the full potential. So the same thing over here, anything that which is to the realm of your potential, to the highest, any potential, the full potential, it can give its best. The tree which grows up to its breast, which gives it the full potential, you cannot see the tree is half grown. Anything will survive, any creation will survive to its maximum potential. The same thing over here, Naka, you meant to say what? A maximum potential of yours. With all my consciousness, with all my heart, with all my soul, everything from the top of the head to the top of my foot, everything, in any manner, if you could cross-check me, I will be found innocent. That's what Pontus Pilate washes his hand. Naka. Today we cannot be Naka in the sight of the Lord. We cannot be art to us in the sight of the Lord. Because we are not using the full potential to grow up in grace. We are not using the full potential to think upon His Word. We are not using the full potential to understand His will. We are not at all using our life to be for the reality of the Word of God. You're still using your negligence. You're still using your arrogance, your enemies, your excuses. You're still using many, many things which is contrary to the word of God. And you would say, this is how it could be. This is how the better thing would be. No. You're really far away from the reality of the truth. Naka, look into a man who claims and who defenses against the chief priests and the scribes and the Pharisees. If they all could stand to one extent, he stands as a witness and he said, I don't find any fault in him, what evil he has done. The standards of the thinking of those idiots, to use the word for chief priests and the scribes, before such unbelieving kings. The matter should have been actually crucified. Rather than crucified, they should have beaten with stones. That should be the first trial of him, because that's the Jewish law, according to the law of the Jews. They themselves perverted from that law. And now they're able to stand before the king, and he said, look into your matters according to your own terms. But they said, no, we come to you. And this man has been warned by his wife to say, nothing to do with the just man. 
And then you can look. He comes up to say, Naka, I am innocent. I am innocent with this man's blood. In each and every thought and facet of your life, I am innocent. Just look, I am just innocent. There is nothing that you can think that I can hold me for tomorrow at the judgment seat. Even if you can look, look into my conscience, look into my every thought, look into my every sense. And this man stands good against those people to say what they're doing is wrong. He said what evil they can find in him. They cannot find any evil in him because he was the truth. Darkness cannot find anything against the light as a witness. When the light is shining, darkness will go off. Christ is our Lord of a God to be the light. And what darkness can shine against the light? Nothing, dear brethren. Just look. When light is there, darkness goes off. So they tried to give a witness against lies. So he said, no, there cannot be any witness against the law, against the truth. He is the truth. He has all the things pertaining to the truth. There is nothing of a witness to be against him. So he goes to give them a solid reason that he is now Naka. He is simply washing his hand. By that he meant to say, I am innocent. Every minister tomorrow calling into this profession of a pastor teacher has to wash his hand like Pontus Pilate, Naka. To say, is there any evil in our teaching? Is there any distorted thinking in our head? You know why they get into distorted thinking? Because they fail in John 1.18, which says, Axiomai. To take in the word of Lord God and to lead in the will of Lord God according to his word. They fail for Axiomai. Since they fail for Axiomai, they get many problems in their life. Axiomai is the failure in the pulpits. They get into many problems. Dispensations being not thought clearly, they fail to distinguish between the standards of the Jews or the Church or the future millennium or eschatological events, whatsoever you can call. They fail. That's the real work what a pastor teacher has. That's what we are reading from Colossians 1. To fulfill to completely fill up every believer's life with the discipleship program, to make every believer to grow up into Kramatias and to go and make disciples of all the nations. That's what every believer has been called to be a witness for Christ. Therefore, not only the word of God to fulfill, even the mystery doctrine as the word could read further in Colossians 1.26. For that cause we go on to become day by day the word of Lord God, to make and train every believer to be perfect and complete in all wisdom and knowledge, so that there could be none wanting in them. Everyone should be completely in the process of giving a witness, saying that we are Naka. We don't find anything wrong against him. That should be the testimony for every believer, every pastor teacher by the believer. We can find him to be Naka. He did the best. Having the testimony is what our life is. And who are the testimony? He said, you are our epistles, you are our joy, you are our crown. The people to whom they have been handed over, not roaming for three years in a place, five years in a place, or ten years in a place. A place minimum three years, day in and day out. Teach them the word of God, whether they listen or forbear. Teach them the will of God. Proclaim them the truth, so that he should be a witness. If there are no hearers, not worry besides nature, then tarajali will be a witness that you did it. But do you do it? Can he be found to the full potential naka? And people will love to look upon appearance. People will love to look upon such and such strategy of ministry, but they don't look upon the word of God. What does the word say? Whether they hear or phobia, teach them the word of the Lord God. Naka, prove your naka. So Pontus Pilate says over here, I am innocent of this blood. See you to it. Then answered all the people and said, His blood be upon us and upon our children. 
Then released he Barabbas unto them, and when he had scorched Jesus, the word scorched meant to say, Pragello, the strong code number 5417. And the meaning of the word Pragello meant to say, to leave behind marks, the same thing what we can find in Mark chapter 15 in verse number 15, that is, to whip or to be the word Latin, Fagellum. So here you can find the word called to be lashing or to be whipped. So he says, after whipping the Lord, he delivered him to be crucified, that is, to give into the hands for taking him to the cross. Then the soldiers, this is what how the Christian life is for us. Rather than using the process of Salem, rather than following the principle of my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ from Isaiah chapter 50 verses 4 through 7, rather than becoming the will of Lord God the Father, what has been demanded in the word of Lord God, now the people have become the process what you can call as this chapter 27 of Matthew from verse 27 through Verse number 31. You know what all they look? We have over here seven to eight steps, which we could note. The first thing, the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the common hall and gathered unto him the whole band of soldiers. You know, that's what you're doing today. First you say you believe in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and you're making many people also to come to believe in Christ. And that's only purely by the lip service. If you're really interested to make them to believe in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the very first thing what you ought to do, you have to make them to look into your life, the life of real conversion from Saul to Paul, the life of real power of emphasizes from the standards of Peter, the way how he was earlier who denied, now in the power of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, he witnesses Christ. That's what the real power, when you really get into the process of calling many people. But here today, you're having to call people for the benefit, saying that if you would follow such and such organization or such and such denomination, the people from foreign, they will support them with fund. You can have your own colony. You can have your well-education. You can have this. You can have that. All stupid thinking. The same thing how these people, they also call the French. The band of soldiers, the first thing what a Christian is trying to do, pulling up many people together in his congregation to be assembled, thinking that if they are able to give them some money, thinking that if they're able to make up some money, so that they can get some more money. That's what they're trying to do today. So here they're called a band of soldiers. And then afterwards, dear brethren, just look step by step what happens. This is what the real Christianity of our life today has been reflected. Rather than looking into the life of Salem, and which God the Father calls in Colossians 3.10 into the process of E-icon conforming to Salem again. So now we look, they stripped him and put him on a scarlet robe. That is, the robe which has been like the process of a royal robe. The robe what they put is greatly to call, saying that, Lord, we are fixing our eyes to be like a disciple unto thee. That's the word. And we are making up our life in the sense of becoming as you demanded us, like a robe of fixing our eyes in Christ, like a robe fixing our eyes to be the disciples, like a robe where we renovate our thinking, like a robe where we have the process of realizing the great things in our vigor and valor according to the word. We have put upon such robe. So Tola, again the word Shad, strong code number 8438 for Tola, or again, 8144 for Shane. It meant to say what the first thing, Tola, it is called, Lord, we fix our eyes completely upon like a disciple to the Lord. That's the word. And then the word Shane, what you can find over here, it meant to say the first thing as the thought process will be absolute in the vigor and valor of the word of God. So Tola and Shane. So these two things. So he said, emphasizing we stripped off and we put a scarlet robe, the robe which has been worn by magistrates or kings or the things pertaining to the emperors. So they first removed upon what cloth they removed? They removed the cloth which he had and they put him upon scarlet robe. You know, they want to make him to be like a king of an appearance. 
That's what even we Christians are trying to do today. We are making up to become like a king of an appearance. We are giving Christ half like this robe. We are saying that, Lord, you deserve the first place in us. Lord, you deserve many things in us. So we just try to give him the place like this scarlet robe being put upon. So we say, Lord, we fix our eyes upon discipleship program. Lord, we make up our thought process to get every vigor and valor of our thought according to your word. That's what we are trying to do. That's what we are trying to give an impression to the people. If you are truly Christians, if you can look upon the name in Acts chapter 11, verse 23 to 26, the first time in Antioch the Christians were called who they were, they were disciples who have been trained for more than one year. They were the people who have been trained for more than one year. Those trained disciples were called for the first time as Christians. So here you're saying in return to the people, Lord, we will make up the process of becoming as disciples unto you. That's what you're trying to put upon your clothes to the Lord. You know what a shameful man we are. Our hypocrisy cannot match the naka of the innocency of his hands. What Pontus Pilate said. In my every vigor and valor of my thought, if you could look, there is no way of a chance that I can be in the process of claiming from the rising of the sun till to the going down of the sun that I am a man who has given this permission for Christ to be crucified. These are the very, very important things, dear brethren. You should be actually ashamed of him. You know why we ought to be ashamed of him? The process of our life, what we are able to look, is not able to match. It is not at all able to match. We are simply stripping off his clothes and we are trying to put him a scarlet robe. The word meant to say, Lord, as long as we live on this earth, we come to your presence. We will do this. We will do that. And in return, if you can look, you are simply putting a scarlet robe of saying that you will be a disciple to the Lord. You will get every thought into captivity for Christ. But in return, no strength in your back to stand by your word. And now what they're trying? They're trying to weave together what they're trying to do. Now they're trying to make up their thinking to be in their head in the process, like the way that the thinking should be like Christ. They're trying to say, Lord, having to renovate our thinking in the thought process, in the pressure of this life, we are able to make our appearance early in the morning to say, we will be like unto thee. You know, the way how the people would promise many things and at the end they don't show up, that's the point. The word over here, what we find, for plated. It's a combination of two Hebrew words. The first word is called to be about, the strong code number 5688. Meant to say, Lord, we will change now our distorted thinking that is happening in our head. We will completely change our distorted thinking. And then we are saying the second word, what we can call over here as Sepharaeth, the strong code number 6843. And the meaning of the word Sepharaeth meant to say what? Lord, against any pressure, we are opening up our mouth to have a thinking like Christ in our head. Sepharaeth. So the two things, what are able to look? They plaited a crown. The word plaited, what we call over here in the Greek, Placo, weave together, what they're weaving together, you know, the clothes of the way you're going to weave. You're going to weave before the Lord God, putting him a scarlet robe, saying that, Lord, we are going to change the distorted thinking in our head. Against any pressure that could come in our life, we will be your disciples. That's what it meant to say when I'm believing in Christ, that you're going to believe in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, saying that when you believe upon Christ, you're saying to the world, Lord, we will be in such and such process, the process of becoming disciples, the process of weaving our head in the viewpoint of Bible doctrine, the process of becoming that which is number one priority to the Lord. That's what we will be. That's what we will think. That's what we will be. So you're plating, you're weaving together what a crown. And the word crown, our dear, it is called as Athara in the Hebrew, 5850. And what is the meaning of the word crown? Fixing your eyes in the viewpoint of saying, Lord, 
we will fill in our soul that which is good we will renovate the standards of our thinking that which is good because the people who are going to get the crowns we look in the bible expressing five crowns and things crown of life a crown for this a crown for that crown of glory a crown of your righteous achievements in all of these things if you could look upon to be the crowns you can understand the same thing what you're going to get as crowns over here you're saying lord i have deposited all the good the things pertaining to your word in my soul so that's the way what you can understand the crown so fixing your eyes that i will make up my body to be deposited with the good in my head so he said the crown but the crown over here is of what the result is a shocking one it is called to be akanta the meaning of the word akanta is nothing but though you have been given this bigger and valor of a pressure to come back to know christ you have never sought to look into it so the word akanta is nothing but against any pressure upon your head you haven't been able to pass the exam against anything that which has been there in the word of god you haven't made it up with authority to renovate your thinking so in simple words he said you have put upon me the thorn of the the crown of thorn it is called to be like the plant which is all the time making up to prick your head so the word what you are it meant to say in simple words you have been representing the time of which you are thinking in this present standards so dear brethren he puts the crown of thorns you are saying akanta the meaning of the word akanta in the hebrew it is called courts the strong court number 6975 and what is the meaning of that from the rising of the sun till the going down of the sun we are having pressure upon selen the way how it is been put so this akanta comes into the place and then afterwards that courts you are going to have the second word called to be seer the strong court number 5518 and the meaning of that a pressure upon your head like a thorn pressure upon your head you know god the father intended this thorn to be removed pressure the first thing what you can call over here for 6975 courts it meant to say from the rising of the sun till the going down of the sun any pressure you can easily overcome because your only pressure should be to go and win souls your only pressure should be to go and win christ that has been removed then the second word cr the pressure like a thorn upon your head now we can find the third word called to be shait the strong code number 7898 and what is shait your thought process which should have with authority you know the word what you speak it has to be in authority that's what it meant to say all these things i want to remove from your life but you have cheated me to say it's a crown of thorns who the believer is saying because the believer is not able to renovate he's just living your life in the standards of the stupidity all believers want to remove christ in the standards of removing his ordinary clothes and put him as scarlet robe all believers want to associate him with the throne with a crown but the crown of thorn which lord god intended is to remove pressures from your life selem pressures the pressures where you have to be a disciple no matter whatever the pressure from the rising of the sun to the going of the sun what we call to be courts it has to be removed and god the father intended that to be removed pressure upon your head intended that to be removed the thought process with the authority it has to be intended that to be removed but you're not able to make up you're in return falling a trap for such things for courts you're a trap for siak you're a trap because you're not able to renovate your thinking so you have ended up with the crown of thorns and then you put a reed in his right hand the kalamas the reed what reed it is called over here dear brother and emphasizing kanek the strong code number 7070 what is the reed you have all authority from the rising of the sun till the going down of the sun as christ our lord of god said i have all the authority matthew 28 18 to 20 what authority exuse your authority the same thing in john 111 and 12 he gave the power to become the sons of god exuse your authority that's the reed which christ our lord of god has given that reed we are saying lord everything is in your hand direct us according to your will he cannot direct you if you are not renovated in his standards if he, he cannot direct you if you are not been able to look upon his word according to his will 
That's the very simple logic. He cannot direct you which you do not know, which you haven't experienced, which you haven't known. He cannot direct you in those signs. So here the point what we can look at now. From the rising of the sun till the going down of the sun, he cannot give you that kana. But here you are saying, Lord, I hand over this reed into thy hand. And then what you're going? You're going to you're going to bow down your knees. And the bowing down of your knees is meant to say, Proskune, you fall down before the Lord, saying that the act of showing reverence and honor. Because you have given him the crown of thorn, because the thorn is nothing but for you, your troubles he wants to remove against any pressure in this life. There is nothing that can hold you back before the love of God. As I said in Romans chapter 8, nothing can separate. As I said, if God be for us, he can be against us. In 1 John 4, 4, greater is the one that is in you than the one who is in this world. So he said, any pressure in this life, there is nothing before me because I have established you to overcome that. That's the image of Salem. The simple example, what we're going to read from Thorn. So here he said, uh, besides that, he has given the reed. The reed meant to say the rod, Kalamas, the staff. And over here, the rod, if you can look, it is nothing but against any pressure from the rising of the sun till the going down of the sun. I have given authority for that to overcome. Pressure upon your financial issues. Pressure upon your stand standards of any worries or tensions on this life including the standards of a right man right woman or the thing because nothing is more important to worry than the word of God nothing is more important to worry than winning souls for Christ so against any pressure I've called you to overcome that's what he said I have given you this read so that now you have been bowing down before me before your knees and then he said the act of the act of expression of reverence and honor so they mocked him now you know empizo the meaning of the word mocked over here dear brethren they have made to say lord we are fixing our eyes to make disciples that's what they say so alal the strong code number 5953 followed by the word shakak the meaning of the word shakak against any pressure lord we're going to build up a wall of fortification from the rising of the sun to the going of the sun and then it meant to say what they have made it up to the process of becoming saying lord we are really able to serve you but in return what they're doing they're mocking my lord they have mocked the lord god saying hail king of jews cairo be joyful the same thing what judas iscariot said be joyful have your stomach have your process of saying lord against any pressure in this life you can see what we have built up you know today many christians if you could look they haven't built up the remain thing pertaining to christ they are built up to the things pertaining to antichrist in their life so they would say cairo Again, the word Samak. And what they're going to do? They're saying, Lord, we erected a structure of discipleship program unto thee. Just come back and look. That's what the word meant to say over here. Cairo. Hail the Lord meant to say what? Look upon, look upon our life. You'll have an expression of joy. The way how we are living, you'll really have an expression of joy. Samak. Because they think it's a Cairo. It's a spontaneous expression of joy. But now we have been deceiving Lord God. You're putting upon him the cloth. You're putting upon him a scarlet robe. You're putting upon him to say crown of thorns. You're putting upon him to say, Lord, take in your right hand the dexia power of your reed. And that's what you look. And the right hand of your dexia power. What does it mean to say? Lord, we have been able to give our vigor and valor unto thee. So you are the one who is going to guide us and lead us in all the things. That's what you're going to say. But you're bowing down before the presence of the Lord. But in return, what you're doing? You're emphizo. You are mocking him. You're ridiculing him. You're making up to such an extent saying that, Lord, look, we have come up to become as a disciple. Lord, we have come up in the process of making up in the standards of Sakak, Alal and Sakak. Meant to say against any pressure we could over come that's what you're trying to say and then you're saying hail Cairo be happy be spontaneous expression of joy on behalf of me and then what does he say king of the Jews and you know what is the result they spit upon him the word spitting is called to be amputo and the meaning of the word amputo is called yarak the meaning of the word yarak meant to say what from the rising of the sun to the going down of the sun your head has not been renovated to the standards of bible doctrine that's what the word meant to say yarak so they spit and they 
took the reed which has been called to be as a staff of authority saying that they could be really doing great kana but really in impact they were not able to get every thought into captivity for christ and they smote him that is they think they are able to smite my christ but in return they have been able to destroy their own life and after that they had mocked him once again saying that lord you are such and such we come to give you this great process you are alal and you are the person called to be shakak they claim out and they mock him they took off the robe that is which the scarlet robe the robe of life which they put for christ as a representative on this earth they remove that hypocritical life because they the remove of that robe and put his own raiment the raiment which god the father intended for him because the word raiment is called to be begged meant to say your body should be erected in getting every thought into captivity for christ and that is gone so now the word what they have to be similar which is meant to say according to his image which you have to grow up that is not been done against any pressure of this life and then he says the process of the word of garment which has to be to go and make disciples against any pressure in your blood so they put upon his own image which he wanted he did not want the image of the scarlet robe but he wanted his own raiment and they led him that is they have been especially leading him with great punishment and trial saying that he deserves it and what did he deserve he did not deserve for you to the process of being uh, leading him to be crucified but he deserves for you to be glorifying him as philippians chapter 3 emphasizes these are the enemies of christ they crucify him a lot card the same thing they are going to lead him to become in the process of crucifying him so here the word apagao meant to say the first one nahag the strong code number 5090 and the meaning of that is that they're going to erect a structure to the thinking of christ they said we have been able to do that and what they're going to say halak and the meaning of the word halak they said we are as disciples growing up into grammatias these are the both things what they're going to say they led him away and what did they do crucify apaga o atas apaga o and what did they do stora o which meant to say what to crucify and how did they crucify they said lord on this earth you have given us all the authority to become disciples but in return we couldn't prove your work of discipleship and thus they crucify him if you're not able to make up your standards to know the word of lord god to become disciples of his will it is as good as to say you're crucifying the lord of god that's what it happens every time you are crucifying my lord my god every time your mask of life removing his own clothes putting the clothes of a scarlet robe keeping upon his head the thorn of crown the god intended good for you you are intending for yourselves to be as a deceiver for christ and you are mocking down you are kneeling down given in his hand the right hand the rod of authority and then what are they doing now they put upon his own garment the garment of his great life the garment of his great success the word garment bagat he doesn't wanted you to be in the trickery process but he wanted you to give the real life so they they mock him they spit upon him they take the reed they smite him that's what we are doing indirectly to the law without obeying his word we mock him without becoming his word we go on to take the reed without without obeying his word we smite him and after that they mock them they take the robe of him put him in his own raiment on him and led him away to crucify him they put his own raiment they led him the word apagao auto apagao and then they go to crucify him saying that lord we did the best but in return you did the best in hanging him up you did the best saying that we have authority to make all the disciples but in return never in your lifetime you wanted to become the disciple of god so dear brother god made man in his cell example of my lord and savior jesus christ the way of his suffering being designed for him god intended for him to be the good 
but you know what we are ending up? We are ending up as absolute morons in this process. And yet, if God the Father comes up with grace to give you one more chance, don't be like that blunt axe. Rather know the word of Lord God, because the word of Lord God alone can set you free. You want to put up on the clothes of not wearing the Bagad meant to say, the clothes of great warrior of Christ. Instead of the great warrior clothes of Christ, you want to appear the garments of your standards called to be scarlet robe. You know how to illustrate this? When David was about to go with his own raiment of war, Saul sought to invent, to put upon him the clothes of his own, so that people could recognize that it was Saul rather than David. But David couldn't take upon those clothes he threw off. And he goes in the standards of his own clothes. Likewise, Christ, O Lord of God, calls us to put upon our own clothes, the clothes of new standards of his righteousness and the standards of his great holiness, not the clothes of what men are trying to put today, the clothes what you can call in simple words, the clothes of what you can make it up as trickery to the Lord. But rather in return we have been given the clothes of truth, Simply let's wear the clothes of truth, obey the voice of Lord God the Father, and do the will of Lord God the Father. So dear brethren, think over these issues. There may be a lot of disturbances with the wind, at least unto the word of God, as we shall come back and continue tomorrow as Lord God the Holy Ghost leadeth us to the praise of His glory in His matchless, marvelous, infinite, divine, glorious grace. So with our head bound eyes closed, the closing moments being dedicated to those of without Christ, without hope, and without eternal life. In order to link to Lord God, the Father, the Prime Minister, and the Lord, Narwak, my Saviour. That's the moment itself. You shall have this eternal truth. This eternal truth for so very simple. Believing Christ, you shall be saved. Whereas for the believer, the greatest matter is to grow up in grace and the knowledge of Bible doctrine, where we teach and to acquire to possess know the truth, the truth shall set you free. And for the pastor teachers, the greatest matter is to carry so thon lagan. Herald the word in season out of sin because the out from a witnesses for which you have been called. The number one diamond from a witnesses will be written in you for the Bible in our hands. And number two diamond from a witnesses will be yours. If they know here is dear brother, not but besides nature, they are really close to your witnesses. And what is our work? Our work is to rightly divide the word of truth, no matter how the chips may fall. So which we want to go, dear brother, and you decide, as we shall come back and continue tomorrow. As Lord God, the Holy Ghost, leadeth us to the place of His glory. In his matchless, marvelous, in time and time. All the sort of priests that try to listen to the word of God. Infinitely divine, Holy Father, we thank for his privilege to have fellowship with the word. The great elementary minister of Lord God, the Holy Ghost, and the challenge is one passage of Matthew 27, verses 27, 33, so that we cannot put the words in the Bible at once, but rather we could be upon the words of your righteousness and give rather than crown of thrones. We could come back to the process of making you to have the handling of your word in our life to the pressure that we go up 